does it occur to you that you rewatch a movie and you realize something that blows the story right open? Well, that happened to me with Sabrisky Point by Michelangelo Antonioni from 1969. Sabrisky is an iconic film from the era of the French New Wave or the Nouvelle Vague. It was made three years after Antonioni's classic Blow Up and nine years after Godard's Breathless. We all know what the New Wave stood for. It broke with tradition in terms of narrative and style to bring a new energy to the screen while always drawing attention back to the medium of film. Sabrisky Point is no different. That's clear right from the documentary style opening. We're sitting through nearly six minutes of debate by a bunch of students on campus before one of them becomes our lead, Mark. Well, I'm willing to die too. One of the revolutionaries. Soon after, we're introduced to Daria, who works for a property developer. Each goes their own way, but just before the movie's halfway point, Antonioni brings the two together in the desert. From here, the story can be largely summarized as Gary writes on IMDb, when Mark and Daria meet, they have sex, travel a bit together, and otherwise spend their time idly wandering about life in general. Sounds like a solid new wave plot, right? Well, even if it's quite thin, I still have to spoil some of it. But fear not, in the final act you'll get at least a few narrative turns. But we're going to fast forward through the entire mid-sequence. I guess it looked like a really great idea at the time, but let's say it hasn't aged all that well. And so we skip straight to the third act, when we're back with Daria, right after she's left the house of the property owner and his horny mates. This is Daria's fantasy. For the house with the businessman to blow up. She's now become a revolutionary too. The final images are an orgasm of explosions against the music of Pink Floyd. By the way, does this look familiar? A psychedelic score over slow-mo explosions? But back to Zabriskie for the point of this video. More important than the similarity with Apocalypse Now is the fact that watching the final images of the film with Daria possibly joining the ranks of Mark and the students, these lines from the opening student debate flashed right through my head. I understand. A lot of us have understood what makes black people revolutionaries, but what's going to make white people yeah, that's revolutionaries? The question. What's going to make white people revolutionaries? This question was clearly planted as the movie's thematic statement. The film may seem fluid and free-flowing like the flower power of the time, but it navigated steadily towards this very point. These images are the ultimate answer to that earlier question, and the fact that Daria's journey brought her to this insight shows a clear perspective and worldview by the filmmaker. It also illustrates how themes are conditional to the time, because ask that same question today and I reckon the answer will be a whole lot less romantic. The bottom line is that the opening debate was not quite as improvised as it sounded. And here's the lesson for us. Even films in the vein of the French New Wave, with stories that don't follow any obvious rules and bask in a sense of structural freedom, they too are often deliberately constructed. And what seems like random images and story beats maybe just a little more planned and organized than you originally believed.